Hello and welcome again. We're talking about the passive attacks on the El Gamala scheme. Uh, in the last video, we talked about uh, one attack that Eve could do is uh, recuperate or um, compute the uh, private spawnant uh, for Bob. Now, I'm going to put a little video there in the description, so if you haven't watched that video, so you can actually see one of the types of passive attacks that Eve can do. Now, this is going to be the second passive attack that Eve can do here, and it will also involve computing a discrete logarithm. So the second uh, attack will be that Eve could compute the Alice random exponent A. Now, remember, that's one part of the setup for the El Gamal scheme. So let's go over it again what Eve actually knows from the El Gamal scheme. So uh, Eve knows... Uh, P, alpha, and beta, which are the public parameters. This is publish, public. And she knows also uh, the ephemeral key and the ciphertext Y. It, this is because she is already, already listening to the channel. And of course, uh, remember that the ciphertext is the plain text times the share key. Now the share key, of course, is uh, in this case, is not sent through the channel. The only thing that is sent through the channel here are this five numbers that are over here. All right, so so before we go into that, let, let me just recall again, uh, because this is a, a video that is kind of far away from the video that we did for the setup. So let's recall the setup a little bit. So so Eve is here listening through the channel. Now remember, the way the Bob set up the El Gamal's uh, scheme is he publishes uh, P alpha and B, which P is the prime alpha generator and B, is that number that he computes doing modular exponentiation, which is here. I'm not sure if you can see this well, very well there. I'm going to try to enhance it so you can see it. So he does a modular exponentiation. What That's what the B is. And he uses a, a number B, lowercase b, which is a random number that was chosen between 2 and B minus 2. So this is what Eve knows here uh, because this is public. Now, Eve also knows the ephemeral key and the ciphertext, which was sent through the channel. So this is the ephemeral key and the ciphertext Y. So she knows that because she's listening through the channel. So that's why uh, I'm saying all of this that I have here. So she has uh, five numbers that she knows from the Elgamal if she is listening through that channel. So these three numbers, P, Alpha, and B, and the ephemeral key and the ciphertext. Now the second attack is is going to concentrate on now what I said over here. So let's go back here. If she wants now to compute the Alice's random exponent a. Now let me show you the picture again. Um, the random exponent a is what Alice chooses to create this ephemeral key and of course to compute the ciphertext which is uh, right here. That's the A that she chose uh, here. That's what he, how she created the ephemeral key, and finally how she got the shared key, and then finally the ciphertext with these computations. Now, so now Eve is gonna try to do that. So we are assuming again that Eve has an efficient way to compute discrete logarithms. So in that way, that you could get that exponent of Alice exponent here. Now she of course knows that because they are using the El Gamal scheme, she knows that the ephemeral key is the generator to this random number here between 2 and p minus 2 modulo p. Now remember what this means here is that this exponent a is the discrete log and base alpha of the of this number right here and this is all in zp star. Now this will be feasible as I mentioned earlier if Eve has an efficient way to compute discrete logs. Uh, so far, we don't have any efficient ways to compute discrete logs, but let's assume for the second that she has a way to do it. So if she can compute A efficiently, Eve can now compute this chair key K by computing just a modular exponentiation, which is not difficult to do. B is public, A is the one that was already computed using the discrete log, and this is all modulo p. So it's a modular exponentiation. And then finally, can re she can get the plain text just by doing a modular multiplication here. Of course, you will have to get 
the inverse of k modulo p and that can be done using the extended Euclidean algorithm which we mentioned in the previous uh, video. Alright, so so again if she can compute this private exponent or just the uh, exp uh, Alice exponent then it is also something that breaks the Elgamal scheme. Alright, so let's do an example with small numbers again. So let's say we're gonna have the same numbers that we had in the previous example. I'm gonna put again a, a link in this video uh, to go to the previous example so you can see actually they are the same the same numbers. So the prime number that we chose last time was uh, 83. This is the generator 45. This is the number B that uh, Bob computed. This is the ephemeral key that was transmitted through the channel and this is the ciphertext 9. Now this was done by Bob of a third party that publishes this uh, setup and this the ephemeral key and Y is what is sent by Alice through the insecure channel. Now assuming again that Alice can compute uh, um, this uh, this grid logs, which in this case is very easy to do, uh, it's relatively easy because these numbers are small. So because the numbers are small, then what is uh, the A here? Remember the A is a discrete log in base alpha of the ephemeral key modulo P. In this particular case, alpha, remember, is a 45. The ephemeral key is a 30, as you can see here. That's 30. And the prime number is 83. Now, you can use the baby step, giant step algorithm. And that algorithm is going to work here because the numbers are uh, quite small, actually, in this case. So if you do that, apply that algorithm, then you're going to get uh, this ex exponent here, 26. Once Eve gets that exponent, and then that, that's it. That's uh, the end of the uh, secrecy here. So because now she can compute the share key, and the share key, because we are using the Elgamal, the share key is that public parameter that Bob has to the random number that Alice chose, which Eve already knows because she computed that using uh, discrete logs. This is all modulo P. Now B is 63 in this case, and let me show you back again here, which is the case. B is 63. And then this is going to be 63 to the 26, which is already computed, modulo 83, which is the prime number. Now, if you do this modular exponentiation with, that is here, which you, you can do it using the square multiply algorithm, you're going to get the, the share key is 40 now. Now, if you compare this result to the video, to the last example, which was also computing a discrete log, and then after that, computing the secret key, or share key, uh, in this case, it's gonna be the same number. So I'm gonna put a video there. I'm gonna put a link to the video uh, in this video here. So you can double check that. You also have to compute the inverse of K, of course, because that's how you decrypt the messages. So the inverse of K modulo P is 49 in this case, inverse modulo 83. Now remember this computation of the inverse is done using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So you have to apply that algorithm in this case. So in this case, it's going to be 60, 61, in this case. The same as it was for the previous video. So and finally, once she has the inverse of the key then, and that's it. So what happens here is uh, Eve knows why. Eve also computed this. And the reason he, she could compute K is because she could do discrete logs and then several other modular exponentiations and multiplications. So this will be very simple. It will be just y, which is 9 times 61 modulo 83. This is just a basic modular multiplication with small numbers. And finally, we get the plain text, which is 51. And if you double check our previous example, that's exactly the same thing we got before. We got the plain text is, is 51. So what happens in both cases? In both cases, if compute discrete logs to get the plain text. So that's basically the, the, the attack here, the passive attacks. So the passive attacks in this case are done computing the discrete logs. So let, let me look at the picture here of the setup. So if you can see here, I kind of highlighted here the part where it can be attack 
And in this case, what is, can be a tech is that exponent that is there in the alpha. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit bigger for you there so you can see it. Now, that's what the first attack, that was the uh, first video we saw about this. Now, the second attack, the one we just saw uh, now, is attacking the part of Alice, which is what we just saw, which is computing the, the exponent for Alice, the random number here. So in either case, what we are actually doing in either case is attacking, for example, the sign of Bob, this, this side of Bob, or the side of Alice to recuperate those exponents. And once those exponents are computed using discrete logs, which is the only way so far we know how to do that now, and it's not possible because the algorithms we have are not efficient. But in the case of normal numbers, of course, that will be easy to do. So in this case, those are the only passive attacks. So the passive attacks that you, we have, these are the passive attacks so far, the ones that we know for sure now. And these passive attacks uh, rely on the fact that we can compute discrete logs efficiently, which we cannot do it at this moment. So these are uh, all the things I have to actually say about the passive attacks to the discrete log. The most important part you have to take about this couple of videos is that the security of the Elgaman, at least from the point of view of the passive attacks, depends in this particular cases of computing discrete logs. So that's why it's important uh, to study discrete logs because if there is a way to do that efficiently, then of course we have to rethink uh, the encryption of the Elgamal and it probably won't, won't work. All right, so, so that's all I have to say uh, for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna discuss a little bit of some uh, attacks that are not passive when Eve actually uh, wants to either change the message or uh, make Alice believe that she is Bob. All right, so I will stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.